Welcome in the Marathon of the World Championship, uh, the World Roller Games in uh, Barcelona. Uh, we come on this race in English. We, there is only a, a Spanish version online, so I decide to come on this video with Olivier Rotali, uh, another coach uh, from Toulouse. And here they just started, well, more than 500 skaters for this very big World Championship Marathon. It's the uh, first time they do an uh, open uh, World Championship uh, Marathon. That means all the skaters from the national team uh, can race, plus also uh, other skaters could register. And also in this race uh, we can find all the masters who are racing actually the, also the World Championship there. Yes, Pascal, it's the first time in World Skate history that uh, all uh, titles for World Champions will be awarded at the same time. So both for uh, senior, as the two guys in front, and all the master categories. And the race starts really fast actually with an attack from Alex Fuavante from Colombia and uh, Pachi Poila from uh, Spain. It's, it's quite uh, risky to attack so early in the race, I think, because when there is such a big pack, it's, it's kind of a flat course race. It's a little bit up and down, and very slow, very uh, not so much. So it's, it's a very small chance to break away so early with such a big pack behind. Yes, and it's difficult also because as you see on this picture, uh, the course is a big straight line, so the pack will probably have those guys uh, in view all the time. So this will be really, really hard for them to maintain or to build their uh, their advance. Yeah, but uh, we know Apache, uh, the skater from Spain, he is used to to attack uh, very uh, often in the race, and he start the speed is almost 50 kilometers an hour uh, from the start. It's it's a good op opportunity to break away with the Colombian because then. Uh, some uh, country like France, maybe in Netherlands or Italy have to, to walk behind. But still, uh, it's a big lap, 8 kilometers. I think two, almost two straight times of 4 kilometers. And uh, so most of the skaters, they use uh, three times 125 millimeter wheels. Yeah, I think we can expect very fast uh, race times in this uh, in this uh, race. Well, because of the configuration of the, of the course and also because of the size of the, of the pack. We can see uh, Bart is not waiting, the Belgium uh, skater uh, in leading position of the pack at the moment, followed by Ewan Fernandez. They, they already take uh, this breakaway serious. Felix uh, Reinen from Germany is also uh, taking this very serious. And the Colombians are doing quite good because they don't let anybody uh, come back. They just put another skater stri uh, straight in the wheels of the skater who wants to come back. So quite good tactic from Colombia. They seem uh, very active and motivated on this marathon. We can see also uh, some image from uh, behind of the pack. It starts so fast. I think uh, many skaters will uh, drop from the pack uh, today. And uh, we will have a lot of skater little bit everywhere on the lap very, uh, very soon. So we have three skaters trying to come back. One skater from Colombia, Felix and Ewen. You can see the pack is behind, like maybe 200 skater in the pack still. And still two guys in the breakaway, Pachipola and the skater from Colombia. I couldn't uh, see his number. So I cannot tell you his name yet. Yeah, we already see a good number of uh, marathon world champions here in the first uh, first positions of the pack. Yeah, like in second position from Germany is Felix Reinen. He is the world champion uh, last year, so he has to defend his uh, title uh, in this race. You can see so many skaters in this race, probably about 500 uh, skaters in this man race. But uh, swinging second, third position now. Ewan Fernandez second position for France. Felix uh, from Germany in first position. Actually, all these three skaters in France they have been world champion uh, in the last few years. And now one attack from um, skater from Belgium. Uh, I'm not sure. Skater 809. And uh, with the uh, second position, we also have now scale from Mexico. Um, Mike Paez, I think, 
Yes, I think it's Mike and still float by uh, Ewen. Ewen, uh, probably. I'm not sure it was Ewen because a uh, little different technique, but at this level, some miskir are the, almost the same technique, just a little bit different style. Uh, Felix is putting a lot of effort in this beginning of the race. We start to see also in the front of the pack some skater from Italy, uh, probably Matteo Barizon and skater from Korea. Oh, so in this race there is a, like I say at the beginning of the race, we have the skater from the national team, but it was also uh, possible to register for some uh, other skater. So we will see also some professional skater from uh, professional team that are in this race. When they are not been selected uh, in the national team, they were still able to uh, participate. Now we have, I think, it looks like Timothy Lubino from France, followed by, Timothy, yes. followed by two skaters from uh, China Taipei. I, would, I think it's yeah, China Taipei. And as you see, just big straight line, one uh, corner, uh, 180 degrees corners. But the road is quite wide, so it's, uh, it's still an easy corner uh, to manage at this level. And we... So end of the third straight, we will be able to see the, the distance between uh, the skaters in the front and the main pack. Yeah, it seems there is nobody in the breaker. Maybe they catch up the skater. I don't see... Uh, I don't see any... Uh, yeah, I think Alex and Pachi have been caught up yeah. and now the guys from Chinese Taipei are in front. Okay, so Timo Tiluino is trying to break away with the two skaters from Chinese Taipei. Behind, just the huge pack. We can see also Caleb uh, from USA coming to the front position. And uh, another attack from Taipei. It's so hard to break away at this speed. Like the There is the same uh, effect like in cycling. When the pack is, is very big, they are there is a lot of drafting in the pack, so it's super, let's say, super easy to follow uh, if you're good in taking the draft. And uh, so when you're in, in, the, in the main pack, it's a big advantage and it's, it's quite easy to maintain a high speed. When you're alone in such a lap, it's, uh, it's really difficult uh, to keep going. So as you can see some skaters are eating the, the cones in the corner, so people have to put them back. We see also Peter Michael in second position, the skater from uh, New Zealand. He didn't make such a good championship this year, he was a bit disappointed, I think, from the elimination race on the, on the track. Normally he's like the star of this distance in the last uh, years, but uh, this year it's a little more difficult, but he's also training on the ice, so and maybe new, there is a new, new strong tentative breakaway. breakaway with this time Bart, the win, the win, and is it Alex again? I think it's uh, yeah. Scramante again. So I uh, three serious guy, specialist uh, from the point race and uh, and from the marathon. The Ewen and Bart, uh, the main, they are very used to skate marathon. We see them on the World Cup. They are always in, in the top three, top five of the World Cup every year. They won most of the race the, the last uh, five years. And Alex Guavante uh, from Colombia, they don't race so many marathons in Colombia. Sometime he came in Europe to uh, race a bit, but not so often uh, in the marathon. We have also a skater from Spain who catch up this group. So now they are four in breakaway. This doesn't look like patchy, so this has to be David Morel perhaps? David Morel, yeah, it's David Morel in the breakaway and Ewen is going so strong, you see. Almost uh, dropping uh, Bart from the draft, uh, but I did, at this time of the race, it's still the first lap. It's probably better to uh, to cooperate good in a group, but uh, you have to go also so strong if you want to make a difference. You see, the pack is massive behind, still easily 150, 200 skater yeah. in the pack. With the pace that the guys in front are setting. I think they're already at some guys at the back of the pack who are having a hard time because, well, when you're running at 45 or 50 kilometers per hour, if you drop the draft of the pack, it's you will finished. never come back. Yeah, nice view here from the pack. It's, it looks a lot like cycling actually. And the pack seems to come back on the breakaway, just Ewen trying uh, again. Ewen is from the 
French national team, he just got selected only for the marathon in this race. On the left part of the road behind the motorbike, we can see Alex Guarante trying again for a breakaway. And some. Um, the, the pack is breaking a few, a few apart, you can see in the. There is maybe a 50 skater trying to come back behind uh, this big group. It's gonna be very hard uh, to come back to manage this. Uh, but uh, it's still possible. I think on this section they are going slightly downhill. So the pace might be very, very high. But if you are uh, close to uh, the skater in front of you, uh, you can uh, use both the downhill and his draft so you can skate very, very fast without getting too tired. Yeah, it's going down in for sure, and we have, uh, I think, Mike Paez from Mexico trying to break away. He's using 4 time 110 mm wheels, that's quite a surprising uh, the guy choice. from Denmark, I think. I think. Stefan Duschmidt or his brother. But uh, yeah, the pack is already here with uh, Nolan Bediaf. The, he was world champion in the World Roller Game two years ago, he won the marathon. Last year was Felix Heine, the skier from Germany, and now he's checking his uh, third rate. During the race, we have the skater uh, Inigo Vidondo from uh, Spain. He's not racing under the national team, but uh, he's from Spain, leading the pack with the man. Behind, we can see skater from Republic Czech, a skater from Italy, trying to survive in the draft at the moment. We have also um, with the yellow flash skin suit, it looks like uh, Guillaume Le Malvo from uh, Team Rollerblade, a uh, professional skater. And in the front part, uh, one more breakaway, a solo little breakaway from maybe Andrea Begin, and the skater from Italy skating for uh, Team Castillon. Not sure it's Andrea or one of his teammates. End of first lap. Yeah, it's Andrea Begin. First lap is uh, done. Another kind of U turn corner, but it's still uh, wide. Most of the spectators they were staying in this area uh, because they had a big screen so people could follow the race from here. And you see, the pack is already so much smaller. The, the speed was probably super high in this first lap because maybe 150 skater left in this uh, leading pack. Well, by the way, amazing location for uh, this marathon, uh, right in the center of uh, Barcelona, close to some of the most famous uh, monuments. This is a great, great achievement from the organizer to be able to put uh, this uh, race uh, well right in the center of, uh, of such a big and beautiful town. A new attack uh, from a French guy on the right part of the road looks like Martin Ferrier. Uh, also checking his us rate like Nolan Bediaf. They are skating from the same team uh, in the regular season during the World United Cup. They skate for the team EO skates. So probably getting the same habits. They are using also 3 times 125mm wheels. Uh, which is a big advantage when you have big straight line like this and uh, quite a flat course. Uh, it's uh, so much uh, effortless to use uh, the, big the bigger wheels. At the back of uh, this first pack, uh, you can see a skater trying to take the draft, but also looking a bit in front because when there is a big pack like this, you have to always watch out if there is no crash. So you have to be ready to jump uh, over the skater or on the side because uh, you have very uh, many skaters with different abilities. It's a world championship, but not uh, every skater I used to skate marathon like this. It's mainly a specialty from Europe and uh, in other continents you don't see uh, so many marathons so you have to always be careful with the behavior of the skater at this level. Martin is still uh, alone in the front with uh, well, a few meters uh, advance on the, on the rest of the pack. But once again, it will be very, very difficult to maintain uh, the breakaway if he's alone. Yeah, he's carefully looking uh, at monitor to make sure he don't put himself in the red so early in the race. We've uh, done about a quarter of the race already. But uh, he knows that uh, going uh, solo breakaway at this time of the race is, is almost impossible. 
and uh, is joined by another French skater skating from Timor Arbe, Guillaume de Malvoux. I talked about him uh, just a few minutes ago, he was in the back part of the pack, but now he's leading uh, with Martin Fier. So two French guys in front, one for a professional team, one for a national team. And still setting a very strong pace. Yeah, uh, Guillaume is amazing for uh, going in straight line like this. Super powerful skater, very good technique for straight line. So it's uh, almost the perfect frame for a breakaway like this. These two know each other very well, so uh, I'm sure they can cooperate uh, and uh, well do the most they can from uh, this breakaway. But there still are uh, more than 100 guys behind who will try to catch with them. Yeah, and uh, facing the, in the pack is also a serious speed at the moment. You see every skater uh, behind each other, which means that uh, it's the leading guy is going really fast and it's the team from uh, Chain Staple, quite surprising, followed by uh, the Italian that are trying to come back on the front guy. Also in five position of the pack we see, uh, I think it's Alex uh, Bastizas, the skater from Venezuela, living in Germany, I think he's coaching uh, in Germany near Berlin. So if you have the opportunity to get coached with this guy, just take it, it's uh, amazing. He's uh, racing marathons for years now and uh, he knows exactly the job. And now it's uh, again a compact uh, group situation, no breakaway. And yeah, one other attack from Chinese Taipei, that's why they were coming back, they didn't like this situation. But it's a solo breakaway again, very hard to maintain. It looks like uh, number 221. Uh, it's maybe the skater who got world champion in the point race on the road. Uh, Cheng, I'm not sure. Uh, but that could be number 221. Yeah, not easy to to find all the names and numbers. But a uh, very good technique, nice uh, side push, uh, very aerodynamic position, a good rhythm with the speed legs. Probably not enough for a solo guy, but uh, very, very nice technique. Those uh, skaters from Chinese Taipei, they are worldwide famous for having almost the best skating technique in the world. One thing that will be interesting also with all those skaters in the pack is to see how the junior skaters who are racing with the senior manage in these conditions. A yeah, nice view of the straight line just behind the break area and we have Timothy Lubino from France joining uh, the skater from Taipei. So those guys were also uh, breakaway together in the point race and that's uh, so that's Cheng, the Chinese Taipei. He won the point race on the road. Timothy Lubino was second in the point race uh, on the road at this World Championship in Barcelona and they are again breakaway together. Probably a good friend and a good gap now about maybe 10 seconds on the pack. There is two skaters trying to come back. Uh, it's probably Felix Reinen and um, uh, maybe Bramante or Bison from Italy. And uh, yeah, then the pack, one line. So showing you how fast it's going at the moment. So many skaters that, well, between the first one of the pack and the end of the first pack, we have almost 25 seconds. Yeah, that's a nice view. When you are uh, at the back of the pile like this, looking in front, you're, and it's going full speed, you think, oh, well, I will come back at the front of the pack. Really not easy. And yeah, Felix is coming back. So that's very serious. When we start to have a few guys break away like this, four together. And this guy with Timothy, he raced for Team France now, but he know very good um, Felix Reinen because Timothy and Felix race the regular season for Team Power Slide. We have this Italian guy. Let's try to find out his name. Number 238. Mm. Maybe Daniele Di Luca, uh, a young senior, and uh, Cheng from Chinese Taipei. Uh, very serious breakaway. Uh, every, all of them using uh, matter, 
with three of them with the green matter we have a thinner profile and Felix using the blue matter with a little uh, wider profile easier to take outside edge and body weight transferred but also rolling a little bit less Alexander Blast is uh, trying to come back on these four guys but yeah almost impossible to come back alone even if the gap is maybe not even 10 seconds going on yeah I think the pact has to react quick because well, given the guys that are in front if they give them a free hand yeah. they won't see them again it's very very serious breakaway and it's if they are working good together so far like uh, nobody is really uh, attacking when they take relay they are careful to to stay together very good drafting between all of them they are nicely taking the same step for this and Nolan Begaf is controlling the pack slowing back up, down a bit the piece uh, and the Colombian may be trying to react on the right part of the road followed by a skater from Denmark from uh, Ecuador also I think uh, no, I think Austria in the second position yeah yeah and the first position was uh, Bolanos for Jorge Bolanos from Ecuador and I, I like this view from the breakaway just behind still going strong and just looking behind a little bit and one scale from Colombia trying to uh, maintain the pack speed and otherwise this guy can easily take uh, 20, 30, 40 seconds uh, away they all can uh, maintain very high speed very good opportunity uh, for those guys and now uh, it's a guy from like uh, say you say Australia I think Austria uh, yes Austria leading uh, yeah they don't take too much responsibility it's not a uh, special job to uh, work at the moment it's more uh, work for the Colombian team they have way enough skater uh, to do the job and they are potential uh, winner in their team especially with uh, Alex Kuravante he's uh, super fast in the sprint also so um, it's gonna be a job for um, probably for the Colombian we arrive again in the roundabout little uh, downhill end of the downhill that's why they go so fast now yeah at this speed there is little downhill and uphill but at this level it's almost like a, it's a flat course when you're in the pack you don't even feel uh, that it's going up and down in this uh, big road and who is leading the pack at the moment? It's, ah it's Inigo Vinondo from Spain um, he's skating not in the national team like I say uh, he's skating for his club here because it's an open world championship uh, I like the idea uh, it's a uh, I think they, they want to do something uh, similar for the Olympic game in Paris uh, 2024 for the running marathon. For the marathon they That's want correct. to make it open and uh, it's, uh, it's a nice idea from the world skate to uh, also uh, make it open. Uh, it's, cha it's changing a little bit the race uh, because uh, you know if you have a skater from your country who is not in the national team who is also in the breakaway how do you react then do you still uh, chase him or, or not so it changes a little bit the tactic but still it makes uh, the race uh, also um, super intense and uh, normally all the best skaters are selected in the national team so it, it should not change uh, a lot the results but uh, we have some um, it makes the level of the race uh, quite uh, higher also so you see the gap is about 20 25 seconds at the moment we finish the second lap and time for a u turn again you see they arrived so fast in this it's a very wide turn <laughs> you see how hard it was to take uh, maybe a little back wing and when i see the speed they arrive in this corner uh, it's gonna be a very fast finish because instead of turning like this for the last lap they will just turn right and go back in the same straight line as the start so the configuration of the lap is they start in a straight line for about 300 meters 400 meters uh, that was a little uphill start and then they go on the course for the lap uh, i think they do 
four, five laps. I can, can five laps. Five laps, and then they turn right again and go down it for the final sprint. That's, that's going to be an amazing uh, final sprint. We are again back behind the four guys who break away. It's, uh, it's going to be almost one lap. Almost one, one lap yeah. break away, and they're still working fine together. Um, Timothy Phil uh, looks quite uh, quite good. Little draft band the motorbike. A very, very good uh, race condition. Quite smooth uh, pavement. Quite a uh, ride, uh, wide road, three lines. It's not perfect to have this uh, this cone just in the middle of the road because you can. And, uh, it doesn't mark the road so good, but it, let's say it's enough. Uh, security there as you said uh, a few minutes ago Pascal the guys from Colombia are doing uh, that part of the work at the front of the pack trying to catch up with the breakaway and just behind them France controlling yeah it's not a good sign for Timothy Felix Chen and uh, Dil, uh, Daniele Luca in the breakaway when the Colombians start to make uh, the reason behind uh, probably they will come out oh, not such a good relief he tried to make the speed go up this guy from Taipei but a little bit aggressive and hard for the guy who just took the relief Felix Ryan behind ah, it's going full speed now with the Colombian they uh, put three guys to walk uh, in front of the pack they really want to come back all the pack in a single line so this is going really really fast yeah, they are not very well organized, but uh, still, so there was one guy who turned to the right. He did his strong relay. Two more Colombians walking behind. You can see it's about it's easily 30 seconds gap at the moment, I think. So it's very very serious. Still, two Colombians walking, followed by two French, ready to jump in the woods in case of attack. Very nice tactic from the French guy at the moment. One also, more Italian skater. Yeah, also good uh, attitude from the Italian. He looks a bit tired, but uh, it's very good to be in this position uh, to protect your guys who are in the breakaway. Yeah, actually the Italian from the breakaway is not, seems that it doesn't take any more relay. So it's not a good side for the for this breakaway. He's on his knees and it seems to be getting a little hard for him. Yeah, and I, he seems to be tired at the moment, but when you do one night breakaway, and the economy they stopped walking. Not so well organized, they give a lot. Uh, Peter is going. Yeah, followed directly by two from very good tactic to protect the breakaway. Also from other Italian ready to jump in the wheels. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the Italian couldn't follow. Well, that's uh, what you say, he start to get tired. Stefano, little uh, too hard for him at this moment of the race. He's a young senior. He is one of the best. He was one of the best in junior one or two years ago. But now uh, senior category is another story. The best of the best is there, and you, you need to be strong. Not good for the breakaway, but still. So uh, now only three of them in the in the front. But always Timothy in the breakaway, so uh, while well, Team France is going, doing a very good job at the front of the pack at the moment, yeah, uh, Chen, controlling the pace. And uh, Chen uh, Taipei is really impressive also, very nice rhythm. Felix, the world champion of this distance, taking the lead of the breakaway at the moment. It's also a good situation to be three skater, you know you got a medal uh, if you uh, can reach the end like this, so they will work uh, good together behind. Serious attack uh, coming again, and we see Pachi trying to react. Coming back on, I think, Martin Ferrier, Alexander Batista looks like maybe part or another Belgium guy, and another skater from Taipei I've seen, but couldn't recognize him. So far, it's it's almost perfect breakaway. And yes, we have five guys trying to come back, and they will come back. They are not that far, actually. Maybe 10 seconds behind the breakaway. Uh, that was not Pachi, that was uh, David Morel again, I think. Uh, they are giving everything to come back, and I think it's Bart. To come back so fast on a breakaway should be a skater like Bart. Ewen. Ewen is also coming back in this breakaway. 
I haven't seen him uh, coming back later, but he came back alone. That's why maybe the, some other uh, skater react behind in the pack. So now we have four skater in front. We have like six skater uh, in another attack train to come back, or five skater. So nine skater, uh, no, ten skater break away, and the pack a little more behind, but uh, probably they will react. They have to react because, uh, well, with ten strong skaters in uh, in front, if they leave them with uh, something of a gap, it will be very, very dangerous. Yeah, they will. 10 skater in breakaway is uh, it's too much, and the gap is very small at the moment. Yet everybody got motivated to come back. Probably they let a little bit also this three or four skater walk uh, one lap to get tired because uh, it's very uh, difficult to break away here. But it makes the Colombians work a lot actually uh, for this. And Ewen yeah, over motivated it go again now with Felix who already have one leg, one lap breakaway in the leg. So it's gonna be hard for him to work with Ewen at the moment. Be hard for him to work with Ewen at the moment. Behind what's going on? Part is leading and he's getting some help from the strong junior skater Jason Suter from Belgium also. If Jason start to lead the pack at this moment, nobody have a chance to break away. And they will come back to the leading guys. As the pack is in a single file and well not not much of a gap. Yeah, nobody was happy with having uh, Ewen such a strong skater in the breakaway, so nobody's working good together. They were going good together this three before, but now uh, two French in the breakaway is too dangerous, they get tired and less organized so they would just let Ewen do the work they need to recover a bit and it's uh, and Ewen cannot be in a good situation like this the pack is coming back lead by Jason we don't see so many Colombians now since they had to work to come back uh, earlier they are probably a little bit back of the pack and recovering because before pulling another trick. Yeah, you see in a good position also Elton de Souza from France. We could see also Nolan Bediaf who won the roller games two years ago. On the right part of the road we have another attack. It looks like the Douce Pelicon from Team Rollerblade followed by Martin Ferrier from uh, Team France. So once again two French skaters very active in this race so far and they try to break away. Few teams have an uh, option for breakaway and sprint. Uh, especially uh, Team France, Team Colombia, uh, Team Italy, they have a good opportunity and enough skater to be able to make or break away or a good uh, final sprint. Tuzla making a strong rhythm at the moment. Martin, good in the draft, he will take the river probably, no, not yet. So we have these two French guys, followed by probably four guys trying to break away behind, 10 seconds behind, but it's going full speed and the pack is just in one line. Or also most of the skater with one hand out, so it's going very very fast at the moment. It's also a little before the roundabout where there is this uh, little downhill, so they catch easily uh, over 50 kilometers now in this moment of the race. And yes, the Colombians bring back the pack on the two French skater. So mm. all the leading skaters are together again. Maybe 100 skater left in this big pack. Three Spanish behind, maybe waiting for the sprint. I don't know if they have a good sprint. Yeah, maybe a Neil Slop. Uh, Neil uh, Lop can be a very good sprinter for, uh, for Spain in this marathon. Uh, he has a good chance for the final sprint if he get good speed from uh, an experienced guy like uh, Apache. Uh, maybe it could work. Uh, still, uh, we can see still many skaters from Colombia here. And attack from Colombia, I think it looks like uh, Rimero. I think uh, a skater from uh, Colombia with the flashy shoes. Uh, nice technique. Uh, going very fast little bit between the motorbike and the skater out of the roundabout 
Ah, the Netherlands skater also starting to... Uh, First time we yeah. see them in the front of the pack. Yeah. We forget about them, but they're very serious uh, skater here. Netherlands skater are also a big specialist of Marathon. And they don't let this Colombian take not even 5 seconds. Uh, but he's skating with 4 times 110 millimeters apparently. So the chance to break away alone like this, even for the last, I would say, two laps, probably two laps before two the laps. end, is almost impossible. Even if his technique is good, because they are telling it Duslan, but it's not Duslan, of course. Duslan was the skater from France from the previous breakaway. Now I think it's uh, yeah, Rimero from Colombia. Romero, Romero, oh. Virgez Romero. So many names to learn in a pack like this, but very good, very good technique actually. But yeah, I don't. He was expecting maybe to have a few friends to break away with him, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Now a little view of another pack, also maybe some uh, master skater here. Also, I know it's. Uh, also nice, still the end of the main pack and we have seen a few of the French guy waiting for the sprint there and taking some drinks, maybe they were, you arrive in the area where the um, coach are giving uh, the drinks so maybe they take uh, the spot behind to get the drinks before the turn okay, end of the lap and I think Romero knows his breakaway, his solo breakaway is over but his Doing it till the end, and again, a guy from uh, Netherlands uh, trying to bridge the gap. Nice pack here still. Timothy Lubino having a problem. He's telling something at the back of the park of the pack. He was breaking before, but yeah, he was yelling something to the coach. Something wrong for Timothy Lubino. Good chance of medal here in case of breakaway, but now it seems he has a problem. Uh, don't know what happened to him. Okay, but my mistake. Romero is still uh, in the lead, and uh, well, obviously the guys from the Netherlands did not complete uh, come back uh, on uh, on him, and so he's getting a little more extra time in front. In the middle of the pack, it's quite easy. Almost no need to push and skate. The draft is doing the job. The Italian team is staying together. We can see Team Castillon skating together. Belgium team also compact together in the first position. It seems people start to believe more in a sprint scenario than in a breakaway scenario. Also French skater almost together. The Spanish together here. Yeah, we have a patchy just in front of uh, Neil Lop. It's a good scenario for me. And the skater from Mexico, Mike Paez, trying to break away on the left part of the road. Yeah, less. Uh, it's a smaller team for Mexico. You know, he has a very small chance in the final sprint, so he need a breakaway. So he take his chance. Also skating here, yeah, like four times under ten for Mike Paez. Very surprising choice for such a course. But some skaters don't like to go back on three times on the 25 uh, after all the track and uh, road um, competition because uh, you have only uh, one day to get used again to do three times on the 25. So the feeling for the technique is a little different. Yeah, and I think Mike uh, has been racing almost all the distances. Yeah, so it was a long championship for him. I don't think he got medal. Uh, from what I remember in this one, but uh, still amazing skater. One skater from Netherlands stopped now, one from Australia, Austria too. And yeah, Mike Pace is giving it all. It's 40 minutes of race so far, so maybe about 20 more minutes to race with the two thirds of the race about. Very good techniques, nice side push, also super aerodynamic, keeping the end in the back for saving some energy and getting a better aerodynamic position. You can see he has a very nice grip, 
on this push. Very good pressure to maintain the speed. Behind it looks quite easy. A few skater with the hand on the legs, but uh, most of the other and in the back having easy speed. Three Colombian skater together in a, about the 10 to 15 position. It's a good place to stay in the pack. That's uh, after top 10 you save a lot of energy. You get a huge amount of uh, draft there. And the Belgian bring back the pack on Mike Paez. It's the end of uh, his uh, little story of breakaway for this world championship. Maybe he will have another chance later, but it's gonna be hard. Uh, yes. I think, uh, Mike is back in the pack. So now we'll see if he's able to uh, insert himself in the pack in the top 20 position. Or, well, he stays in the lead. front. <laughs> <laughs> but easy followed very close by Ewen. Molan following Felix. It seems like the French have a good tactic to control the race. Putting Molan behind uh, Felix, they are almost sure to have a good guy in the breakaway. And if they have Ewen behind Bart, that's the same scenario. So very good for the French. Yeah, many French skaters in the in the front. Uh, Martin is still there. Already two breakaways, two yeah. small breakaways for Martin, but he's still uh, there and going strong. Also, we've seen the skater from Ecuador showing to the front of the race again. It's, it's not a, uh, a bad sign where you don't see some skater like we didn't see so much the guy from Ecuador. We didn't see the, so much the skater from Netherlands or from Italy. Uh, it's maybe because they, they think more of a um, sprint uh, scenario. So they save as much energy as possible uh, to put all the effort in the sprint. And it's very possible in this kind of uh, circuit. There is no big appeal to make a selection during the race. Uh, there is no specially uh, strong wind or side wind. Uh, oh, oh, big, big crash. crash. Yeah, you see a big crash from uh, Quentin Giordo, Caleb Wakefield from USA, Guillaume de Mario is down also. Uh, we don't like to see so much uh, image like this. It looks like crash, a bit like in cycling, very similar kind of crash. Yeah, one skater from Netherlands also. And uh, yeah, this is nice uh, very bad. But Austria also is Austria there, also. Christian yeah. Pomoser. A big crash, but uh, almost a uh, skater from the front didn't see. Just to, if you're not from a uh, skating sport, the skater, they don't have like a radio also like in cycling, so they don't get any information like this. Uh, as you can see, there is also no team car following uh, the race. So when you have a technical problem or need water, you just have to catch the water from the coach uh, in the um, in one special part of the circuit. So once a lap, you can you have opportunity to get the water or the food. But uh, in this kind of, it's just a marathon. It's about a one-hour race. So they drink a bit, but they don't eat uh, so much uh, in such a race. They take a bit of food uh, with them. Uh, they take usually a bottle of water, like uh, half a liter, and uh, maybe. Um, a little more during the race, the race if they have opportunity to get something. And now we see a skater from Ecuador start to get very active, especially to the attack from Peter Michael on the left part of the road, going in the draft of the motorbike now to get a little bonus for his breakaway. Yes, Let's Peter see. going at it again. He crashed on the track, so I think he's very frustrated with his uh, championship so far. So it's important for him to. Show uh, New Zealand's uniform the front of the pack and perhaps perhaps go and catch a medal on this uh, last race of the championship. Yeah, but just two skaters in this breakaway, one from Ecuador who seems to give everything uh, to survive at this speed with this 4 time 110. Shaking a little bit too much, the shoe goes up and down, but it's not enough to be able to keep a rhythm uh, in the front. The pack come back quite easy on this breakaway. Peter he has experience, he know it was not the good breakaway, he need more, uh, many more strong skater with him to be able to break away. 45 minutes of race so far, it's look more and more to a sprint, ah, first attack from, who is this guy, it's Martin Ferrier again with Alexander Bastidas. 
one from Colombia now, you know, there's just a little acceleration. We can see a uh, skater from Netherlands, two skaters from Netherlands in the front. And the attitude from the attack are much different now. It's not like strong attack like in the beginning of the race. It looks more like some uh, acceleration or something to keep the rhythm of the pack. But um, nothing, uh, the, the attitude is different. All the skaters start to be uh, tired also. So they have less power to make strong breakaway. Or just some skater, some team, like maybe Colombia, who want to get a final sprint. Yeah, quite easy speed at the moment, little over 40 km an hour. Two new breakaway on the right part of the road. One skater from. Is it Peter Michael again? Yeah, you know, it was not the good one before. He tried again, that was a smart move. And now he's gone with one skater from Belgium, which is a good scenario because probably this guy can lead also uh, nicely with him. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but we have Andrea Begin. We know. This guy is uh, in the top 10 of the world in the cup. He is ranked uh, top uh, 10 uh, in the polar tour, the ranking for all the marathon skaters. Uh, you see some coach giving some water to the skater here. So Andrea Begin, Peter Michael and the Belgium guy. Little breakaway. Ah, it's, a good, it's a good gap already, more than 10 seconds. That can be serious. And Andrea Begin, he can... Uh, he don't understand why the, the other guy don't take relay. Probably the Belgian guy have the. He's not taking relay. He's not allowed. Probably they want to sprint for the Belgian team. It's very possible. Uh, Bart is strong in breakaway, um, so we could think he's not good in sprint. But many times he can win the sprint also. Yeah, it's not yeah. very organized for this breakaway. Yeah, maybe the Belgium guy just don't take relay also because he cannot uh, follow the speed. Also, maybe tired after one week of competition. Just to make you remember, uh, for such a race, they had three races on the, three days of uh, competition on the track, one day rest, two days on the road for some classic distance with point race elimination, 500 meters race, and so on. And the last day of the championship is this marathon. So some of the skaters, they are tired from racing uh, every day, different distance. Yeah, that's something to think about in terms of, uh, of strategy, because, uh, well, some skaters, most skaters from the national teams are already tired by the, by the races of the past days. Whereas others, such as Andrea here, or Ewen, who is in the French national team, but who uh, is racing only the marathon, are completely fresh for this uh, for this one race only. Yeah, it's a big advantage when you can have some uh, fresh skater uh, in your team for the marathon. And the pack is coming back, and already we have very different speed. We see some skater from Spain in first and second position. Bart swings from Belgium in third. Ewan Fernandez in fourth. Number 464 from Spain, a uh, scale from uh, with a Barcelona skin suit from the club from Barcelona actually. And we arrive uh, quite soon in uh, the last lap. The referee slaloming the <laughs> cones before the corner to take enough distance before the corner because the pack is arriving super fast and you see they are pushing each other so much draft when you're behind so you want to push a little bit the guy in front and it's giving speed to everybody in the pack so that's why the, the pack can get uh, so much speed with very little effort perhaps 80 skaters left in the front pack and the Belgium is controlling the speed you see skater from Ecuador, from Colombia also. They have a very similar skin suit, uh, yellow, red and blue between Ecuador and Colombia. It's very hard to make the difference between both. And Mike Paz is back at it. Mike Paz is still there. Three, four Belgium leading for the last lap now. But one more attack from Doucelin Pelicon, the French skater from Team Roller Bay. Uh, it's a solo breakaway. 
in the last lap trying maybe to catch little draft from the motorbike here to create the gap he look the end to check if he got some friends for this breakaway but it seems he's alone now i think at this moment of the race too many uh, people are thinking of the sprint scenario especially when you see the four belgium guy leading the pack one lap to go Maybe they just secure the speed to make Bart recover from the few breakaway, but he didn't make so many breakaway Bart in this race. Yes, uh, uh, I think many many national teams are thinking of a massive sprint for the for the finish because we already see most of the teams trying to regroup their skaters. Well, we saw Belgium, uh, Italy, France, uh, yeah, Hugo Gérard, the French guy at the end of the pack. Doucelin, the French skater in the breakaway. Uh, so um, many French skater in this pack. Many Colombians, also many Spanish, of course, because of this open race. Also, many good skater could uh, register. But uh, I'm nicely surprised to see how the pack gets so small for the end of the race. Well, maybe still 80 skaters in it, but uh, compared to the numbers we had at the start. It showed that it was not an easy race. When you see so many uh, skaters would drop, that means uh, the, the rhythm was very hard. But now it's the last lap. We can see the attitude of the skater is very different. Um, it would be interesting to see if uh, in this uh, leading pack we ha still have uh, some of the master skaters. Uh, well, that's going fast. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's possible. There is still some master skater. Uh, we can find maybe a Luca Presti from Italy. He has experience. He was a world champion marathon uh, in uh, 2000 something in the early 2000. So he has experience with the draft and uh, he know how to save so a lot of energy in a pack like this. So maybe uh, Luca Presti is still there. It's very possible actually. And the race is it, but the Colombian using three times under 25 blue matter, same as Felix Ryan. Right behind was a French guy in the middle of the group. We still see Netherlands, Canada, Germany, Mexico, Italy, Netherlands again. You see, in front, it starts to be like a, a strategy of getting the right position. So even if we are like, still a few, meter, few kilometers before the end, we still want to get uh, behind the, the right person, behind the right group. The, the team, they will try to coordinate themselves to create a little train and uh, to protect the leader uh, from any uh, fight and from the wind. So if you have a very good sprinter in your team, uh, which is not the case from Peter Michael making an attack now. And then you want to put alone yeah, again. Alone again, but and already Colombia is trying to follow. Yeah. But it's already the same time that Peter is trying to attack in the last two laps. So probably give already a lot of energy in the first two attempts. Uh, it's going to be very hard to try a third time here. We know we don't have enough speed this year for a final sprint, but they have enough endurance for a breakaway. So. He take his chance, but no, no, way. no more gas in the machine so far. Especially when Jason Sutton, the Belgian guy, come to him. Also, the other French, I think maybe it was uh, Martin Fayet, but not sure. Oh, new skin shoot. This is Ken Quada, I think. Yeah, from, from Argentina. Argentina. Yeah, a little tricky between the cones for the skater. Yeah, Argentina trying to break away, but uh, yes, you see, skater, they don't have any, enough energy left compared to but the, the speed of the pack so it's very hard to create a gap and it's going easily uh, over 45 kilometers an hour the chain is taped trying it uh, two skaters from chain tape they like to attack in a group of two felix in two yeah. but it seems as felix is not keeping up with them yeah. oh not so easily anyway because the pack is here for and the pack is here jason Suter is the guy from argentina there are five Another Argentinian behind. Elton de Souza starting to show him uh, his face also in front of the pack. Uh, Elton can be one of the good sprinters also for the Team France. He didn't do any work during the race, so he can be a fast guy. Even if it's a, if it's a downhill sprint, 
if not uh, his advantage uh, you would see scaler with more uh, powerful leg and less explosivity probably in a downhill sprint but, uh, yeah, but still uh, he, he can jump everywhere he's the, one of the best to take the good position yeah so El elton can be very fast and is one of the most amazing skaters uh, as far as uh, agility is concerned yeah and in this case in the last few kilometers that would mainly be a question of agility and elton is, is one of the best another crash here from scale from ecuador uh, and from Netherlands, Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, in the last lap, little bad luck and another skater ah, also from New Zealand. So maybe Peter Michael, not sure. Yes, it was all, almost in the middle of the pack. So, not like in cycling, when there is this kind of crash, you, see, you would see maybe 10 uh, cyclists on the road here on skates. And uh, when there is a crash in the middle of the pack, uh, it's not so hard to jump around or jump over the skater crash so we see many times a crash with two three skater and uh, not much more than this so the crash uh, arrive uh, sometime but uh, not so many times with a big group uh, when it's big straight line like this uh, it's quite easy to jump over uh, a skater crash Argentina again yeah. uh, is not wearing his number anymore but I think it's Ken Kuada I cannot see on the helmet uh, the number but um, yeah when you see the skater he lost his left number it's probably there is a little bit some fight in the pack and uh, when the skater they use the helmet it's not Kuada helmet yeah they uh, sometimes you grab the skater on the leg or, and uh, the numbers uh, go out Martin Feige followed by skater from uh, Belgium and then Daniele Di Luca again and Jimmy Duet I think in fourth position the French skaters came from Team Castillon they make the rhythm to come back on uh, the Argentinian guy it's the same tactic almost same I would say that Martin Escobar won in Spain in 1998 uh, Martin Escobar was from Argentina and he got a world champion like this making an attack in the last kilometer and uh, he won the race Chad, Adric and Jorge Botero couldn't catch him up in the last kilometers. Here we are a little more, maybe two kilometers before the end now. Something like this. About two kilometers, maybe a little bit more. Oh, I could see there was another crash. Ooh, again, two three skater on the ground. And it occurred yeah, quite in the front of the outside line. Ooh, a skater from um, a Spanish skater actually from Team uh, Gravity, I think it was Team in Gravity. And falling alone, yeah. all the other skaters managed to uh, go yeah. around. Or and up. now in, we are in a moment like everybody is trying to take the good position, the good uh, trying to find a good train, so there is a little bit of fighting in the pack. It's a nice moment where you have to be uh, very agile, you have to protect the leader bring him in the front, protect him from the wind and also protect him from uh, the grabbing because uh, not like in, in cycling you have to you cannot use your hand here uh, you can use your hand a little bit, it's not allowed but uh, it's, um, it's part of the game uh, when you have to take a position to use a little bit and, and, and especially in marathon it's uh, very important to be uh, strong and agile on your skate. Got a question for you, Pascal. A few seconds ago, I saw Wendel Le Piver still in the pack. Do you think a pure sprinter like uh, like him can lose something on a massive sprint at the end of the marathon? Yeah, Gwendal is one of the fastest guys. He didn't want any title at this point in so he's willing uh, to uh, get uh, maybe a world champion title is possible but uh, he has the speed definitely those, those kind of guys uh, they can uh, easily have enough speed in the last kilometer uh, but I don't think Gwendal have enough experience he's taking the right position at the end of a marathon like this so or he get drafted very well by Ewen or guys with such a huge experience in the French team or a, um, it's very hard for him because uh, he, he, yeah, it's just a different game, you have to get used to it by racing uh, big marathons like Berlin or, 
or Ren or Big uh, Strong Marathon uh, every year. Mike Payer on the right part of the road. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll have a good surprise with the win, uh, with uh, Gwendal, but uh, it doesn't seem to be in the French train so far. We see Ewen, we see Nolan, we see Elton. Very well organized. The Colombians are doing exactly the same. Felix uh, protecting uh, his back. He's following exactly the French train. He know what to do. We see also Miguel Bravo from Portugal here, maybe taking the position for uh, probably very soon. We will see Diego Maros arriving uh, just in front of him, but he lose against the three Colombian skater. Mike is doing the speed in front. I don't know why he do this so far because uh, then he has no chance in the final sprint like this. We are maybe one kilometer to the finish, not even. Very close. We will have now again. Uh, piece of straight line and then a right turn and at this right turn when you see the big statue the big obelix it's gonna be so maybe 500 meters to go now the last turn will be on the right and it will be the final sprint in downhill and this is the yeah. Ooh, this is from Kobe almost crash and Bart is taking the lead from the horse the straight line it's gonna be very long in front on the right we see Ewen Fernandez taking the lead at uh, uh, Nolan on the left the part little. of the road and Ooh, seems like Nolan Baby have just passed that swing on the line. I could see uh, maybe Felix third and um, he went, he went well four, done. Yes. Elton five. Very, very uh, nice finish. Super fast sprint, uh, very slow, uh, <laughs> very short distance to stop. Let's see the finish again. Yeah, hey, uh, Nolan first. Bart. Nice win, Bart second, Felix with Felix. a nice finish third, Ewen and Elton. Elton, and then Dusan, then the Colombian train, yeah, nice finish, new victory for Nolan Bediaf, uh, he is getting specialist of the marathon roller games, he won the first roller games marathon two years ago in Nanjing, he won the second roller games marathon in Barcelona, he is world champion and he will skate next year with the nice uh, white jersey with a stripe for more champion. The fast marathon with the leading pack finishing in just under one hour and one minute. Yeah, not the fastest marathon ever but very uh, serious racing. Love this uh, organization. Thank you uh, Roller Games for organizing this incredible state also for this huge marathon with the open race. And congratulations to all the skaters doing uh, this. It was an amazing race and can't wait uh, to see those skaters again uh, at the end of the marathon season, probably uh, in Paris, in Berlin, um, or maybe in uh, Pamplona for the P2P marathon, one of the hardest marathons in the world. But for sure, in Berlin, in the end of September, we will see all these guys again competing to win this uh, biggest marathon in the world. Congratulations to all the skaters and see you next time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for watching. Uh, this uh, commenting uh, part. See you soon.